the atmosphere, the gaseous envelope which surrounds the planet or any celestial body. Sure, the atmosphere like Venus would kill you in seconds if you walked on the planet's ground without any protection, such as some type of suit. But here on Earth, it is not the same. Earth is the only planet in the solar system with an atmosphere that can sustain life. The blanket of gases not only contains the air that we breathe, but also protects us from the blast of heat and radiation emanating from the sun. It warms the planet by day and cools it at night. Earth's atmosphere is about 480 kilometers or 300 miles thick, but most of it is within 16 kilometers or 10 miles of the surface. Air pressure decreases with altitude. At sea level, air pressure is about one kilogram per square centimeter. At three kilometers, the air pressure is 0.7 kilograms per square centimeter. There is also less oxygen to breathe at high altitudes. Earth's atmosphere has six different layers. They go from the ground all the way to outer space. Closest to the surface of Earth, we have the troposphere. Tropos meaning change. This layer gets its name from the weather that is constantly changing and mixing up the gases in this part of our atmosphere. The troposphere is between 8 and 14 kilometers or 5 and 9 miles thick, depending on where you are on Earth. It's the thinnest at the North Pole and South Pole. This layer has the air we breathe and the clouds in the sky. The air is the densest in this lowest layer. In fact, the troposphere contains three quarters of the mass of the entire atmosphere. The air here is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. The last 1% is made of argon, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. The next part is the stratosphere, located just above the troposphere and below the mesosphere. This layer is about 35 kilometers or 22 miles thick. The stratosphere is where you'll find the very important ozone layer. The ozone layer helps protect us from ultraviolet radiation from the sun. This layer of our atmosphere has its own set of layers. There are no storms or turbulence here to mix up the air. So cold, heavy air is at the bottom and warm, light air is at the top. That is the opposite of how layers work in the troposphere where we live. If you were to climb a mountain into the stratosphere, you would have to take off your warm clothes as you got closer to the top rather than putting them on like we usually do. But there are no mountains high enough to reach the stratosphere, so you don't have to worry about that. The third layer is the mesosphere, located just above the stratosphere and below the thermosphere. Meso means middle, and this is the highest layer of the atmosphere in which the gases are all mixed up rather than being layered by their mass. The mesosphere is 35 kilometers or 22 miles thick. The air is still thin, so you wouldn't be able to breathe in the mesosphere, but there is more gas in this layer than there is out in the thermosphere. Meteors generally burn up in the mesosphere. The next layer is the thermosphere. Sandwiched between the ion sphere and the mesosphere, thermo means heat, and the temperature in this layer can reach up to 2,500 degrees Celsius. If you were to hang out in the thermosphere though, you would be very cold because there isn't enough gas molecules to transfer the heat to you. This also means that there are not enough molecules for sound waves to travel through. This layer of Earth's atmosphere is about 513 kilometers or 319 miles thick. That's much thicker than the inner layers of the atmosphere, but not nearly as thick as the exosphere. The thermosphere is home to the International Space Station as it orbits Earth. This is also where you'll find low Earth orbit satellites. You can say there's a lot going on in the thermosphere. Next up, we have the ionosphere. It's a very attractive part of the atmosphere, and it grows and shrinks depending on the energy that it absorbs from the sun. Its name comes from the fact that gases in this layer are excited by solar radiation to form ions, which has an electrical charge. This layer overlaps the mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. Parts of the ionosphere overlap with Earth's magnetosphere. That's the area around Earth where charged particles feel Earth's magnetic field. In the ionosphere, charged particles are affected by the magnetic fields of both Earth 
and the sun. This is where auroras happen. Those are the bright, beautiful bands of light that you sometimes see near Earth's poles. They're caused by high energy particles from the sun interacting with the atoms in this layer of the atmosphere. Next, the outermost layer is the exosphere. It is the very edge of our atmosphere. This layer separates the rest of the atmosphere from outer space. It's about 10,000 kilometers or 6,200 miles thick. That is almost as wide as Earth itself. The exosphere is really, really big. That means to get to outer space, you have to be really far from Earth. The exosphere has gases like hydrogen and helium, but they are very spread out. There is a lot of empty space in between. There is no air to breathe, and it's very cold. When you see a clear picture, our atmosphere is kind of amazing. It's a perfect balance for every living being on Earth to exist, and that's what we all humans take for granted. The plastic we throw away, the trees that we cut out, the fuels that we burn, even your electronics as e-waste is hurting our amazing planet. But we, as a species, don't generally value what's going to be the worst of our future, but something which is good for our comfort. And that is a future we are the most horrified about. Next time on Discover Zen, we will be discussing everything related to the Hubble Space Telescope. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you liked what you saw, click that like button and subscribe. Let us know in the comments below what you think will become of the Earth's atmosphere. Until next time, friends.